So here's the Farrer Slab here, the arm booth. And who are you? Hi, my name is Florin Dumitrascu. I uh, work for INEA. And here in the arm booth at the Mobile World Congress, we are showing uh, a demonstration of a Faros reference lab. What is INEA? Uh, INEA is a uh, company based in Sweden, and uh, it has been in the telecoms uh, business uh, for quite some time. Uh, they, 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 are, uh, they have created one of the uh, real-time operating systems which is widely used in the telecoms today. Uh, but now they are actually involved in the open source and the network fu function virtualization uh, initiative. And uh, today, here in the ARM booth, INEA is showing uh, an implementation of an OPNV reference lab. So what is an OPNV reference lab? An OPNV reference lab, it's, it's an open source project which uh, aims to provide a platform based on open source components where TEMs um, uh, and uh, network operators can implement and test virtual network functions. So you test on applied micro KVM, can we see the different ones you have? Yes, so in this lab we are using ARM targets, ARM V8 targets, applied micro servers and KVM network servers. Uh, installed in, in a reference lab for OPNFD. MD applied micro KVM. Uh, currently, we are uh, in the lab those using two. those two APM and KVM. And soon this? And we have this in another instance of the lab yes. we are just building now. Where's your lab? The lab is based in Shista, in uh, the headquarters of INEA. That's in, that's in Sweden? In Sweden, okay. yes. So, um, I will walk you uh, over our demo. So, the reference lab. Uh, it's comprised of three controller nodes and two compute nodes running OpenStack uh, and uh, Ubuntu. And then there is a uh, demonstration of this is our demo, basically. Uh, we are building here the OpenNV platform uh, running OpenStack and Open Daylight for, uh, for an NFV virtualization solution. These are the targets, KVM and, and uh, Applied Micro. Virtualization acceleration is done by KVM, so it's open source, and virtual networking is open vSwitch, so again open source. And then here is our small demo, it's, it's an orchestration application which basically creates a service chain, that's the keyword in, uh, in NFB, it's a service chain. And uh, the service chain is actually using a third party DNF doing deep packet inspection uh, from a company called Cosmos. So, um, really what we have used here uh, is uh, OPNLV for ARM. So what is this? So what, what this means is basically you have an interface into the lab shown here where you can configure the nodes uh, the, that you use. We configure the network interfaces and then very easily basically hit deploy and this uh, interface is automating the process of deploying OpenStack and Open Daylight. So it makes it really easy for, for, uh, for uh, someone who wants to use the, uh, the infrastructure to deploy OpenStack and Open Daylight. And then you're basically ready to, to, to use your DNF applications. So this is, uh, uh, this is running on your, on your system? So this is running currently uh, on our ARM servers in, in Shista Lab. So what exactly are they doing? Like they're using so all the hard drive, the for CPU? Here you can see the controller nodes are applied micros. You can see here the applied micros. Uh, and then the compute nodes, they are KVM networks. You can see them here. Uh, our system is already deployed here, you, you see the system is ready to use. Um, and then, how do you use it? Basically, uh, you have an, an interface into OpenStack, where you can see our virtual appliance is running, and the virtual network is created. This is typical OpenStack interface. Uh, and then, uh, we have an interface into the SDN controller, which uh, uh, this is open flow protocol to basically create the virtual networks. And uh, then there is a small application we created to, to, to create a, a service chain. So this is our own small application. But there is uh, you know, uh, standardization coming into play today for protocols uh, used to create a service chain instance. And um, there's just a very uh, simple demo showing uh, the application running. So this is 
uh, uh, traffic running from one end to the other in the service chain. And right here on the right hand side, it's an interface in the DPI, Deep Packet Inspection Virtual Functions. And, and, and you can just interact with it. Uh, this is HTTP traffic, so we can show that. We will drop it. Traffic stopped working now. And nice. uh, I will just toggle it back, and you will see the traffic coming back in the after this. Are you using a, an Armour Chrome bit here? Uh, Chromebook? Yeah, yeah. That's good. All right, there's a Chrome, uh, but it's just, uh, it's just a bunch of uh, browser windows controlling yeah, yeah. everything. This is all Chrome. Uh, so, really, what the purpose basically is, we focused on the infrastructure. We have the Pharos lab infrastructure, which is uh, an open lab, lab platform. So, we are basically encouraging anyone who wants to try VNF applications to see how they perform on ARM targets. Uh, the lab is open and uh, upon request we can provide access to anyone who has more complex VNF applications and they want to test them on ARM platforms. So you work on the ARM server yourself? Uh, you work I, on the ARM solutions? I have worked uh, with INEA to deploy OpenFV platform on the ARM servers, yes. So uh, how is it to work on this? How do you like it? Uh, it has been really is it interesting? Yeah, and challenging as well. It has been, we had uh, support from the OpenFV uh, open source ecosystem. We had support from the vendors, from KVM, from Applied Micro. From so, Linaro? And uh, from Linaro as well. So yeah. when everything, when all the efforts are joined, really, uh, things get moving forward. So. Um, uh, it's a bit challenging, you know, to to, to catch up with the with the uh, the other ecosystem that's on yeah. the market. So, so how is it compared to what you were doing before? Uh, before what were you doing before? Before, I also worked in in, uh, in the let's say uh, SDN domain and close to the NFV. So, before of this, I was uh, working in a startup building an optical switch space on X86. Uh, not really. Uh, that was a that was a TM basically building an optical switch. So I think that was a uh, you know it, it was a, a power PC Marvel something else. <laughs> All right. So uh, is this is already working? And how far is it from uh, being used by all the people in this industry everywhere? Yes. So today uh, the Faros lab showed here is open. We are still uh, we are working on building our second Faros lab such as uh, we can continue our development work on uh, one of the Faros lab and leave the, the, the other one completely open for everyone to use. But today we still allow uh, uh, other companies to, to use our lab. For Invited instance, guests. Yeah, Invited KVM, users. for instance, can today use our lab to, to, to help us working and, uh, uh, and, and work on KVM targets. And uh, we are working with other companies as well, uh, coming into play. So slowly, this will become completely open, and uh, like the other Faros labs that are deployed today. So, do you think in 2016 all these guys are going to be using ARM servers? Or is uh, it going to take more and more work? Uh, it's going to take some work, but it really depends on how open and uh, and, and uh, collaborative the ecosystem will be, because it's really about an ecosystem like like uh, like in the Intel market today. So. If, all the partners will get together in this effort. We should really be able to see uh, real applications running on ARM targets in, in, in one year or two. It's a very big project. To, it's basically a re-architecture of the whole uh, networking system, right? Well, that's the whole view of NFV, yes. And that's something that's happening today. And ARM needs to be part of it, because that's basically the, the future. Yeah. Without NFV and without ARM, it wouldn't be possible to have all these people connected to the internet. Definitely, ARM has a big part to play here, so and, and uh, uh, this is going to happen. A big part of the solution for a better future. Yes, and for better, you know, more efficient uh, interconnected networks.